Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Thank you for staying with us. If you want to call us up and be down with anything we're talking about, call us at 804-402-2893 to be part of the discussion. 804-402-2893. I feel, almost feel like I need to give y'all something to get y'all to, to call us up because we go through week after week and we give out the number and nobody calls. But I know y'all listening because y'all tell me, I remember when you said such and such and I thought you was a dummy for saying that or I thought you was great for saying that or Carlton said something crazy and well, you don't have to listen to know that because he always says something crazy. But it is, it is, it is, don't take it. Okay. It is, it is what it is. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Carlton Banks wants to ask, what do you think about it? Carlton Banks. All right. I stole this from my friend's status yesterday. Because I know what, who she's talking about, well, what she's talking about, but it gets into the situation of this thing called double standards, I think. Anyway, at what age can your child have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Ooh, really? I mean, I know it's a double standard in there somewhere. I'm just saying. What age? Uh, you know, it's, you know what's funny? Oh, gosh. You know what's funny? I had this conversation today mm-hmm. with Mama J. Mama J is 10. <laughs> and she's 10, and I had this conversation. So uh, is that your setup, or you got more? Oh, no. That's, that's pretty much the setup right there. But the young lady who asked the question, I want to say was six or se- was seven. She's seven. I'm going to go ahead and say she's seven. Seven years old asking yeah. that question? Asking that question to her mama. Ooh, I'm going to get the diva on this one first. Me personally, if I were a parent, I think around 14 maybe if I, you know, could like be part of the dating process, like pick them up and drop them off kind of thing. I mean, I think it's cute when it's innocent and you drop them off at the movies or the mall, you know, something like that. But I don't think I could go much younger than that. Okay. Much younger than that. How old again? 14? Around 14. Okay. Okay, fourteen. Hmm. I don't know. You got some comments out there that you, you want know, to share? I, I, um, I know. In some cases, my son got a marriage proposal in pre-K. So what that what's that telling me? I just want to know. I mean, daddy was daddy ain't have a problem with it. Daddy ain't have a problem with him getting a marriage proposal Girl, in pre-K. Girls are faster than but, boys. But you know, his mama had a problem with it, and I think that's all around what that comes back to that mama's gonna have a problem with their sons. Daddy's gonna have a problem with their daughters. Um, personally, hey, dude, as long as you ain't doing it, do. And I become a granddad at the tender age of twenty-six because I'm young. You know, I'm oh, twenty-one goodness. right now. Um, as long as I don't become a granddad before I'm twenty-six, I'm good with it. That's how I really feel about it. Here's my thing. Uh, as I mentioned, I had this conversation with Mama Jay today. And she mentioned to me that someone had a crush on her. And um, she thinks that she thinks that she thinks that uh, she likes them as well. And she asked me, you know, if it was okay. And my response to that was when you say how old you are to date, you know, I guess we should define what dating means because. When I asked her, because see, any decision that we make, you know, Mrs. J and me, well, not any, because there's some that, you know, we got to just go ahead and, and, and deal with it. But one thing that I do like to do is let her feel like she's part of the decision. Right. Because that way you're more likely to get her buy in and she can feel like, you know, she agrees with what's being said. If you just say, do this, do this, do this, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that you can run into having a problem with rebellion, which I ain't going for it. Pop J ain't going for it. I ain't going for it. Big Brother J, he don't go for it either. That's just how we were raised. That being said, when I asked her how old she thought, she said the exact same number that you said, Diva. She said 14. Um, My thought is, and anybody that knows me, everybody likes to make a joke and say, you know, uh, you know, you, you be the one with the shotgun. Oh, because everybody knows how close I am with Mama J and all of that kind of stuff. My thing is this. If the boy will come to the house with his pants up and refer to me as Mr. Johnson, then he has a chance. If he can't do those basic things, 
then he has no chance. And it'd be nice if he came to my house with a parent so that I could meet them. <laughs> I, I'm not sure why he thinks that's funny, but I'm going to give him his opportunity to respond in a minute. You know, 14 for me is too young. It, it just is. I understand why 14 is the number, but 14 is too young. Uh, I'm more likely to say in the 16 to 17 range. Do I think that's realistic in the world that we're going to be living in in six years when she gets there? Probably not, but that's what I would like, and I will make sure that I do what I can to maintain that. As the father, I have an open dialogue with her, obviously, because she said to me today what she said to me. So, you know, I do know that there are going to be little boys that like her, and she's, there are going to be little boys that she likes, you know, but again, we need to define dating. What does that mean? Does that mean that, you know, they identify each other as the boyfriend at school? Does that mean that's who you get to hold hands with? Does that mean that, you know, that's who you sneak away to go kiss on? I mean, what, what does, what does it, all of this mean? Because we also in reality, like what Carlton Banks alluded to a minute ago, you know, I, no one's looking to, to, to have anything life altering happen before it's supposed to happen. And certainly we know that the more time you spend with a person that you like, the more likely it is that you're going to like them a little bit more. That's, that. just, that's, that's just reality, especially when you got raging hormones and you don't understand what you're feeling because it's very difficult. It's very easy to confuse those feelings, particularly when you're younger. So to that, Carlton, you say what? Well, let me tell you why I laugh, because see, really and truly, I laugh. I saw you as... Um, Martin and um, um, not Martin, um, yeah, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith during that episode of Bad Boys Two when Dude came to the door asking to take his daughter out. So I really saw that impression of you. <laughs> That's why I had to start laughing. Understandably, it, at that point, it's you know that type of of exclusiveness when you have boyfriend and girlfriend. No, I like you. You don't like anybody else. It's gone different from the, pat, the note passing that we used to do in school. Do you like me? Will you be my boyfriend or girlfriend kind of thing? Uh, and there may be some touchy-feely kind of thing. But that's when you had that open relationship with your kid and whether or not, you know, that's appropriate or not appropriate. Um, they're going to be hanging out, of course. Um, there's a standpoint of can I come over your house and hang out with you? Um, then you're going to be like, well, is the door going to be open? Are you going to be up in the room? Um, no, you're going to be staying here watching TV while I watch TV as well. You're not going to be off alone somewhere where I can't keep an eye on you. But then let's flip that. Your daughter's 14. What, what about the son? I mean, are we saying 12? Because, again, there's that double standard. That boy is supposed to be doing certain, should be able to do certain things earlier than a girl. Like I said, Son got a marriage proposal in pre-K. I won't. I didn't have a problem with it. Mom did. Am I going to have the same idea when he becomes 10, 12, and he wants to try to have a girlfriend? He's already tried to kiss the girl on the bus, So, and that was in first grade. So, hey, what, what can I do? I can't stop maturity, or I can't stop uh, puberty. A lot of it has to do is because the kids see too much too soon, and I got to admit that I'm guilty of it because I don't screen – you know, a lot of what she watches the way I know some other parents do is just because, you know, I would much prefer that my child see things on my watch and ask me questions right there than go somewhere and see them, you know, somewhere else and ask the wrong person the question and get the wrong answer. And next thing you know, I got to deal with the problem, Diva. Yeah, I was getting ready to say something to that effect that the parents have to like have that talk with their kids about dating and sex and relationships, all that kind of stuff, pretty early, you know, to let them know this is what's coming down the pike and this is what I expect of you type of thing. Um, but with the 14 years old, I was thinking more of, you know, an innocent going out, the parents are involved type of thing, you know, not they just out there. Well, I mean, you got you to gotta know that, you know, once you open up the door, the door is open. You can't reclose it. So, you know, what your expectation might be, you got to know that whatever it is that you allow, they're going to try to push the envelope a little bit further. That's that. Not only is that the nature of children, it's, the, it's human nature. If the speed limit is 65, you're going to go 70. You know, that's, that's, that's just how that works. So, you know, I think that you need to have a firm number that you're very able and willing to stick to because if you don't you know and you show 
you know, the fact that you're willing to change or waver. You know, you won't change and waver on one thing. Maybe you might change and waver on another. And, and, and the next thing you know, you got a kid that's challenging you. And that just don't fly with me. You know, that's the one thing. You know, I could be the fun dad, uh, the fun dad's friend, you know, you know, fun, the friend of the fun dad and all that kind of stuff. But one thing that you won't do is challenge me. You know, if I tell you this is the way it's going to be, then that's how it's going to be. And I don't want to talk about it no more. I don't want to discuss it. I don't want there to be any dialogue. I mean, that's just the way it goes, you know, while I'm the parent and you're the child. And so I want there to be the kind of relationship early on where we're having a conversation and we have the rapport so that we ain't got to be fighting about this later. I used to catch heat when I was, you know, a young parent. My daughter was younger and I used to have her reciting her rules. There were rules that she had to live by. You know, they, they might have been, you know, a little basic stuff. You know, I, I will say, yes, sir. I, I'll, I'll wash my hands after I use the bathroom. Like, I would make her say these things over and over again. I used to catch heat for people. You used to think I was crazy for doing it. But now I got a well-mannered, well-behaved 10-year-old because she used to say those things when she was young. And I know we're getting a little bit off the subject, but I want to address something that Carlton said. Carlton, I want you to grab the mic and hold it straight. So that way we don't have any issues with the, the audio. Um, basically, you alluded to the double standard. Right. And let's talk about it. Let's talk about the double standard. You have a seven-year-old boy. I've got a 10-year-old girl. Um, let's talk about the double standard. What did you mean by it? And I think I know what you mean, but I want the listeners to hear what you mean. It's, it's viewed by society that boys should be able to do things a lot earlier and sooner than girls do. Even though girls may mature faster, um, there's a stigma of protecting a woman longer than you do a boy and making him go out and fend for himself, so to speak. It's that um, rite of passage standpoint that boys get to do things faster. You hear that argument all the time. My neighbor has a boy and a girl. The girl's older. The girl got her iPod at 10. He's eight now, and he got his iPod. Um, you know, for one, there's an age difference of when she asked for it, and two, you know, it was about time he got one kind of thing because he kept asking her for hers. So, it's, are, are you okay with that double standard as a as a person, as an individual? Are as you- a person, I don't feel it should be a double standard. Why not? Why? Because again, she should be able to do everything he does. It shouldn't be all about. Why I won't let her do it. I shouldn't have to have that conversation. It shouldn't be about the age or anything like that. It shouldn't be because it's my way. It's what I want. Again, women are viewed differently than men. And it's always come back to say, this is what I want. And it's a double standard. Dating pool diva, based upon the tenor of the conversation and the double standard, what's your thoughts? I feel like it shouldn't be a double standard either. I just, you know, believe that men and women, girls and boys um, should be able to do the same things. I mean, if it's okay for the guy, it's okay for the girl. I mean, I, I never really understood that, but that's how it has been since the beginning of time. I mean, there's always been a double standard. And, you know, I know people who, as boys, were allowed to do things that girl children in the same household were not allowed to do, you know, and... You know, it, it, it like you said, it, it kind of is what it is. Um, we got a hit on the Mixed LR page. That's why Butler says uh, 18, depending on the uh, the mentality. Uh, and she said 14 with, with exclamation points. What the hell? So I think she's agreeing that 14 is probably a little bit too young. Uh, and 18, I think, personally, is a little bit too old. So for me, it'd be somewhere in the middle. But going back to the double standard thing, I mean, I, I get it. I get the double standard. You know, you we live in a culture where we shield our girls, our women. You know, as a man, it's your natural instinct to protect your women. And if you're, you know, if you're the father of a girl, then it should. I mean, you know, that's where the whole stereotypical dad with the shotgun thing comes from. You know, whereas your boy, you know, as a man, you understand what he's going through. You understand what he's thinking. And you hope that he will be prudent as you were, assuming that you were. So you may not have the same kind of, you know, helicopter parenting with him that you may have with her. Is it unfair? Yeah, it is. Because she's being raised in the same household as you, the same values, excuse me, as him. So you should assume that she's going to be able to handle her business as far as taking care of herself like he will. But that's just, that's not the mentality. Again, 
You know, it's just it's just a little bit different. Now, I understand both of you agree that the rules should be, you know, the same for both. But and I and, and I would tend to agree with that. But I know that it's not. I know that it's not because I've seen it not be the same. Of course. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've seen it not be the same. Carl, you're saying, of course, I'm saying, of course. Yeah, it never will be the same. It's not supposed to be. But you just said a minute ago that it should be. It should be, but it never will be. You just said I know it's not what supposed I said. to be, but before you said it should be. Hold on, wait a minute, man. I know what I said. Can we it, be consistent? I am going to be consistent. Right, it which will, one is? It never will be the same. But you said. It should be. First you said it should be, then you said it shouldn't be. I mean, it, it shouldn't be from the standpoint of I want to protect my daughter. All right. And you're on I'm, record as being glad you ain't got one. I was on record as saying I'm glad I ain't got one. That's right. Because I wouldn't have to want to, I wouldn't want to have that decision when it comes down to it. Because I had to kill a kid. Yeah. I yeah, would. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I understand. Like I see the look on my daughter's face when she thinks that I'm upset with her. And I know the sensitivity that she carries. And it's one thing if she's upset with me. Because I can manage it because I know what it takes to make her not upset with me or make her not think that I'm upset with her. But the thought of not having the control over making sure that she's okay, yeah, it's a different kind, of, a thing different kind of thing than right. it is with the boy uh, Diva. Is it because, you know, we expect the boys to be more rebellious and more they're going to do what they're going to do anyway that they're allowed to do these things earlier? Girls are more rebellious. Absolutely, absolutely. I don't have a daughter, and I know girls are more yeah, rebellious. Yeah, gir- girls are more rebellious. I don't think that that's it. At least not. It, it, it has. It wouldn't have been it for me if I had boy ch- boy children. You know, it'd be a perfect time. If pops Jay is listening to call us up, tell us how you uh, how you raise Marcus Jay and and Big Brother Jay. Call us eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three, or not just pops Jay, but any father of grown men. You know, if you're listening, and you have grown children. Grizzy, if you're listening. Call us up because we know you have a grown son. You know, I don't know that you worry about rebellion. I I, I think, and and I know this isn't going to be well received by the sisters that's listening, but I think as a man, you see your male child, even as a boy, as a man. You know what I'm saying? And you know that there's a certain code that men should kind of roll with. And you assume that even even though he's a boy, that instinctively he's going to understand that code there's just certain things that you do you don't disrespect your mother you don't disrespect other people's mother you don't disrespect you know a girl we understand it you're going to try to get you some you know be respectful to the girl things of that sort you know that hopefully you're teaching your male child but you're also hoping that he's receiving it whereas you also have and i don't feel this way because i have a girl and i don't think i would feel this way you know even if i didn't but you have some people who like you know that's that's that girl's parents problem they my problem i got a boy you know what i mean like some people actually think that way i I don't think that way but some do and so maybe that's the reason why you don't have a problem with your 12 year old boy that's got a girlfriend but you know you want your daughter to be 20 well guess what your 12 year old boy he dating somebody's daughter he's dating somebody's daughter and so i think we need to be mindful and cognizant of that carbon banks you got any last words I look at it like this. Son, you come to my house with a girl pregnant, I'm going to have to kill you. As long as you can protect yourself and don't come in the house with a girl pregnant, we all right. I ain't got a problem with you. You can kiss whoever you want. You can touch whoever you want. Just don't come in the house pregnant and don't catch a charge in the process of doing it. I mean, I, I, I really hope that you're saying that with your tongue firmly in your cheek because if you're not, then I got a problem with that. Because if you're sending your, ch- your son out there armed with that kind of mentality – then you're basically inviting those things that you just said that you don't want to have happen to happen. If you tell them you go out there and touch and feel and kiss and do all you want, just don't bring no babies home. Think about how you felt the first time and to be honest with you, the last time you got to touching and feeling and kissing. You're going to want to do some more than that. And trust me, as a grown man, I'm sure that you have developed some sort of restraint over the years. But when you're 14, 15 years old, you don't understand that restraint. And, you know, when things start happening in your body that, you know, you don't have the kind of experience that a grown person would have that even a grown person sometimes can't suppress. You going to start doing some stuff that you ain't got no business doing. And if she's just 14, 15, just like him, then guess what? It's going to happen. 
Well, I teach them now. No means no. Yeah, but maybe so, she don't say no. Well, she's got to say no. I mean, hopefully she says no. Because that's going to be the first thing I'm going to ask. So you okay with your 14-year-old son out there getting some? I ain't saying that. That is kind of what you're saying. I ain't saying that. Well, what I, are you I, saying? I didn't, I didn't put an age on it. Uh, okay. I said I just did. You put an age on it. I just did. I ain't answering that question until he turns 14. Okay. Fair, I was I enough. was 15. Okay. So I can't, I can't be okay, mad so at you. So you're okay with your 16 since I added a year to what you were. Are you okay with your 16-year-old boy out there getting something? Because, see, remember, keep in mind, we had a similar conversation a couple of weeks ago when we said that we have to approach these discussions as the parent. And we are no longer the children, and we can't sit around and reminisce on how young or how old we were the first time we did it because that's not the way it works no more. We're the parents now. So we got to take the adult role, and we got to look at us. We got to look at this and say, "All right, you know, I may have been whatever age I was. Is it appropriate, or was it appropriate for me to be that age?" Because you got to remember, you know, if you're 15 years old, you're getting it in somewhere. You're either getting it in at your house, or you're getting it in at her house. Yep. So the thought of it going down in your house while you at work, how does that make you feel? I uh, kill him. Okay, you'll kill him I'll if you came. Him. I, but, what, I can't, but the thing but is, you, I would have to know home, about. But what if you came home? But what if you came, home, but but you came to... home and you found that not only was he doing it, he was doing it in a very safe way, and he was doing it with full, you know, consent of his partner. You still gonna kill him? Okay, we're gonna ask. We're gonna just like the end of the movie Project X. Son, I'm disappointed. I'm proud of you, but I'm still disappointed. That's why I just said he's going to give him a high five for okay. real. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. It's all about how you feel as the individual. I mean, that's just real talk. It's all about how you feel as the individual. I'm not, I'm not trying to put you on the spot oh, to no. make you seem like, you know, there's something wrong, you know, with what your response is. But I need you to own it as oh, well. I will. You know, I need you to own it as well. We're getting a hit. Uh, S.Y. saying bingo at your response to Carlton. Just don't get a baby. That's one reason my 18 is enforced. And so she's basically saying when I called you out by saying, you know, kissing and touching is okay. She's saying, no, it's not. That's why she's sticking with 18. Diva, you was going to say something? I was going to say, too, if you giving them a high five, I'm disappointed. But, yeah, man, at the same time, you giving them mixed messages. He going to go out there and keep doing his thing. And hopefully he's strapped up. But what if he's not? A lot of times they're not. No, you teach and that young. You Even if you up. are strapped up, you really got to be prepared for these grown up things that can happen to you, like disease, like babies, regardless of you being strapped up. So I, I think, you know, it's really too young at that point to be talking about sex. And then when I say 14, I was talking about taking them to the movies and drop them off and pick them up type of thing. I'm not talking about sex. Right. Right. We're going too far there. Yeah, I think I agree. I think we are going a little bit too far there. I mean, let me just put a bow on this. Colin Banks, I know this is your segment. I'm going to say this. You take the final word, and then we're going to move on to the final segment of the show. I, for, for me, I think to, to sit around and wait for the child's birthday to come just so that you can match a number that you put out there 10 years earlier, I think that's also irresponsible. If you've got a, a, a mature child that you feel can handle certain things, then you reserve the right to alter that number. You know, should that number be 14? Should it be 16? Should it be 18? That's for you as the individual parent to determine. And you also have a moving target. Because if you have a 10-year-old who you think is mature that can handle having a boyfriend at 15, and you're the parent and you feel that way, then sure, knock yourself out. But if you got a 10-year-old and you can see that your 10-year-old already can't handle basic amounts of responsibility, then you might want to hold on a little bit longer because you can foresee some bad happening to them as they mature. That's just the way I feel about it. And I think that that is the way it should be for boys and girls. Was it that way for me coming up? No, it was a little bit different for me coming up. But again, you know, that was a different time. And I also acknowledge that boy children were, and in some cases still are, raised different than girl children. Yes, Colin Banks, take the last word. Overall, I want the kids to be safe. That's the biggest thing, first and foremost. They're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to have fun. They're going to experiment. And things are going to happen. Regardless of what happens, be it good, bad, or indifferent, I'm going to love my child. And I'm going to try to my best to protect him in the end and beginning. 
That's how I feel about my kid. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. We see y'all on MixLR, Shoutcast, WinAmp, and Loud City. We appreciate the love. We're going to take a break, y'all, but when we come back, we're going to get into the Paula Dean stuff. I know it's the top of the hour. We're going to, Obviously, we're going over, uh, and we're glad uh, to have you. A lot has gone on in the last week or so with regards to Paula Dean and some of the things that she said, and uh, we want to talk about it, so stay with us. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus. Jay, be back in a very short minute, so don't go nowhere.